You know, whether you live in Delaware or Maryland or Virginia, you probably refer to home as Delmarva. The 5,454 square miles that are hugged by the Atlantic, the Delaware Bay, and the Chesapeake, very unique. And so are the many towns and cities that lie within those coasts. And since Delmarva Life is all about life on Delmarva, we want to do more to showcase those towns. To kick off this series, we have invited the mayor of the town our studio is in, Salisbury. <laughs> Welcome, Mayor Jake Day. Lisa, thank Jimmy, thank you. Thank, thank you. you our our inaugural, you are your town. Well, I appreciate that very much. All right, so you've been mayor since November, right? That's right. How's it going? It's fantastic. I love this job. I, really? I couldn't love it anymore. I love it almost as much as I love this city. That's wonderful. It's a good job. It's yeah. a good job. You know, I work with 425 really incredible, talented, uh, hardworking individuals, and um, I get to meet new people every single day. Right. Now, when, when Lisa brought up this idea the first time, and I, I love this idea, and we talked about sitting down one-on-one, -on -one, getting to know the person without the politics, just getting to know Jake Day. So what do you like the most about Salisbury? Well, so so I love Delmarva. You know, I love the water. I love the Eastern Shore. And I, I love the fact that, you know, what I believe is the capital of the Eastern Shore is my hometown, yeah. this special place. Um, and, and right now, I'm really excited about the, the center of our community, where, where it's really happening, downtown Salisbury. So I'm very excited about some of the things that we're seeing in downtown, a, a really renewed life, uh, a sense of renaissance and rebirth. Right. And uh, there's a lot of excitement things happening out there in the business world in downtown you know new restaurants new shops mm -hmm. people moving jobs downtown yeah. that's an exciting thing for I think the entire region cool. okay well with any job there's also as we just learned there's the stress sure. the things that keep you up at night what is that for you well the thing that keeps me up at night is my seven-month-old daughter <laughs> to be honest with you um, but, uh, but she's actually a pretty good sleeper that's not fair to her no. it's 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 worry about uh, you know keeping keeping folks safe um, it's worry about the budget right now uh, we're writing a budget and that's uh, that's nobody's favorite part of the job right yeah. but it's the tool to get great things done so I'm very excited about that but there are moments where I wake up in the middle of the night grab my laptop grab my phone grab my pad and paper and uh, it doesn't make my wife very happy but, <laughs> and jot yeah. down notes and ideas for the budget and change a diaper and change the diaper, and change the, diaper. Yeah. Um, the guy who changes the diaper you know at night and early in the morning okay. I'm, I'm the guy, he's so. the one there you that's go my job. we're always hearing mayors we're always hearing politicians we're always hearing city council talking about revitalization Sure. Is it really possible to turn all that talk into action? That's a great question. And I think what you do is you look at your peer cities who you admire, who you want to be like, who you, you, who you aspire to be like. And I look at, at other great cities that aren't that much bigger than us, small cities around this country, and say, what was different about what they did and what we've tried to do? And I'll tell you what the difference is. The difference is stick to it It is the fact that they, for 20 or 30 years, didn't give up on their downtown, didn't give up on turning what was an abandoned place in favor of of malls and shopping centers mm -hmm. and things like that to a new different thriving place and so what I'm committed to is saying this isn't going to be four years this isn't going to be eight years we're going to commit to a new generation of excitement and life in the heart of our city Make yeah okay I can't wait any longer you, you talked about your daughter yes tell us more about this sweetie all right so my daughter uh, is seven months old now Lily is seven months old and um, she's she just is. starting oh, to crawl look at oh, her. Gosh. Oh. she's a cutie <laughs> She's just starting to crawl around. See, she's uh, she's interacting. Um, I was away for uh, training exercise this week and came home, and I feel like she was able to do things that I, I had no idea she could do on on Thursday when yeah. I left. So, <laughs> so she can crawl further. She can climb. She can. Uh, she's you know making new sounds. She's Aww. wrapping her arms around my neck. So it's they, wonderful. So exciting. Is it just me or did you see his face? I just light saw up his face light up and oh enjoy every moment of it because yes. I know you're getting tired of hearing it, but it goes. So fast in the blink of an eye. I so. know. I wanted to just stay put <laughs> for the yeah, next at least absolutely. 18 years. Just stay put. Okay. So uh, we actually uh, reached out to some of our Facebook uh, friends and and to see if they had any questions for you. And of course, uh, we had some. So we're gonna we got time for one here. Our first question comes from Facebook viewer Shirley Hitchens. She would like to know if you would be interested in implementing a homeless prevention program where people currently staying at shelters would spend their time uh, spend their days out of the shelters looking for jobs, pursuing education 
additional opportunities? Well, Shirley asks a great question. And I think if people pay attention to, uh, to me at all and, <laughs> and, and listen to what I say, they know I'm an enthusiastic guy. I'm excited about Salisbury. I'm happy to see revitalization, things like that. But there are challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're going to be in these positions, you have to be willing to tackle the challenges head on. And one of ours that you see, whether you're on Route 13 or whether you're uh, near one of the shelters um, in our neighborhoods, you're going to see a homeless population. And on the lower shore, the lower three counties, we have about a thousand uh, homeless persons at any given time. Um, and that increases, of course, at certain times of the year, but yeah. about a thousand people mm. are, are struggling without shelter, without reliable, consistent shelter. And so what are we going to do about that? Well, in this budget, as I said, one of the things that we're going to announce and propose is the beginning stages of implementing a housing first approach. And housing first acknowledges that, you know, we've got maybe substance abuse issues or mental health issues, um, maybe financial issues and other things that go into homelessness. But the very first thing we want to address is giving them a home, mm -hmm. is putting people in shelter. And then it goes from there. It, and it goes from there. And then you have to wrap around them right. other services. You have to wrap around them yep. case management. You can't ignore those things. Sure. But Housing First says, we're going to get the housing piece like done first. A plan going uh, we're, we're trying. Hey, All right. we're, trying. we're not finished with you 